coming up on The Overcoming Life with Jimmy Evans. Faith in Jesus and his blood makes us saved. Faith in God's word makes us safe. And we need to understand that. The word of God, Satan opposes us because we believe in the word of God and because we're committed to the word of God. Well, how do you overcome the devil? Through the word of God. In this message and talking about exposing Satan, I want to ask and answer three questions so that we can come to understand this issue. Question number one is, why is the devil our enemy? Why would would the devil pick on us? You know, as sweet as we are, I'm very sweet. I don't know about you. I'm super sweet. Everybody knows it. Number two question, why can the devil defeat some people and others he can't? That's a question. I mean, why can he just lay waste to some people and other people he can't defeat? Number three, how do we protect ourselves and our families against Satan? Those are three good questions. So we're gonna ask and answer those three questions. Let's begin with this one. Why is the devil our enemy? Why is he our adversary? Here's the answer. Satan is the enemy of truth. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the way the truth and the life and the eternal word of God and he hates him. Let me say this, if you're not walking according to the word of God, he's not your adversary, he's just your master. Jesus said, he who sins is the slave of sin. And he's not talking there about, you know, all of us who fall short of the glory of God and we make mistakes. It's walking in sin, unrepentantly. That's what he's talking about there. Jesus said, whoever commits sin is the slave of sin. So if you're walking in lies and in deception, you know, like all of us did before we were saved, he's not your adversary. He's your master though. But when you come to Jesus, when you give your life to the Lord, Satan becomes your adversary. Here's Here's what Jesus said to the apostle Paul. In Acts 26, the apostle Paul is telling us what happened on the Damascus road when Jesus met him and he got saved. And here is what Paul says. Jesus is talking to Paul. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So Jesus says to Paul, here, Paul, I'm going to put a calling on your life and I'm sending you to the Jews and also to the Gentiles and I want you to turn them from darkness to the light. You know what the light is? It's this word right here. I'll tell you in just a minute. I'll show you in the Bible in just a minute. This is light. The, the devil is full of lies and deception. And the apostle, Jesus said to the apostle Paul, I want you to turn people to the light and in doing so, you will take them from the dominion of the devil to my dominion, from the power of Satan to the power of God. Listen, you're under the dominion of the person whose advice you're following. And when you're walking in lies, you're under Satan's dominion. Let me say this, when you're saved by the blood of Jesus, you're going to heaven, the devil can't do anything about that. But even saved people can walk in bondage. Even saved people, that's the way I was, I'll tell you more about it in just a minute, but I'm saying as a young believer, I, I walked in deception. So when we get saved, and, and we commit ourselves to the truth of God's word, the battle isn't over, really it has just begun because at the point of time that we commit ourselves to the truth, that's really when he becomes our adversary. Let me say this, as a young believer, sometimes it can seem as though being a Christian is harder than being an unbeliever. Isn't that the truth? Is that true? You get saved and you love Jesus and when I was lost, I was very immoral, I was very rebellious. Uh, I was very empty on the inside. The reason I turned to Jesus is because sin lied to me. I was a good sinner. I was extremely good at it. I woke up every day with a goal to sin and I went to bed successful (laughs) and empty and unhappy. And the reason I turned to Jesus is because sin lied to me. And when I let, let Jesus come into my life, he filled my heart and Jesus has never lied to me. And my life has been full for the last 44 years of serving Jesus Christ. 
But I got saved and I was so naive. I didn't know anything about the devil. I didn't know anything about you know, living for God and things like that. And just immediately I could feel the opposition. The opposition of doing the right thing, the opposition of living for God. I had no idea it would be like that. So I wanna read you a scripture here. And I want you to see here, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. And Jesus came and he says, if you abide in my word, you're my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. It was extremely offensive to the Pharisees to hear that because they said to Jesus, we're sons of Abraham and we have never been in bondage. Here's what Jesus said to him. This is John 8. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you're, just, you're not able to listen to my word. You were of your father, the devil. It, Jesus was, he didn't mince words, did he? You were of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. You know why if the devil would just read this book, he would understand he's about to get it. <laughs> you know why he can't read this book? He cannot accept truth. He can understand this. That's why we have such an advantage over him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell you the truth, why don't you believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you're not of God. So Jesus is preaching this message and all of a sudden the Pharisees start coming at him and opposing him. And he says, ha, ha, you're acting just like your daddy. He opposes the truth just like you. He is the opponent because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he's speaking out of his own nature because he's a liar and the father of it. Listen to me, when you're living for the truth, the devil is your adversary because he hates the truth. And you say, well, maybe I shouldn't live for the truth. No, no, when you're living a lie, you're in bondage and you're gonna live a miserable life. Let me ask the second question because this is very important. Why can the devil devour some people and he can't others? And the answer to that is some people are protected by the word and others aren't. Listen, some people are saved, but they're not safe. Faith in Jesus and his blood makes us saved. Faith in God's word makes us safe. And we need to understand that. The word of God, Satan opposes us because we believe in the word of God. And because we're committed to the word of God. Well, how do you overcome the devil? Through the word of God. So let me give you several examples here. This is Matthew chapter seven. This is verse 24. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, listen, and does them, not people who hear them, but people who do them. I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain descended, the floods came, the wind blew and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended, the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall. Well, let me, this is a little foundation here that the crew kind of helped me with. So let me just say this is the word of God. Let me just say that I'm gonna build a marriage and I'm gonna build a family and I'm gonna build a career and I'm gonna build finances and resources. I'm, I'm going to build my life, my, my future, my destiny. Let me see how I'm going to build. Because you're building. You're building something. And you're building it based on some information. Your family heritage, what somebody told you to do, what you saw on TV, what you read in a book. You're building your life based on some information. But listen, there's no promise that you're going to succeed apart from God's word. Jesus said, a person who hears my words and does them is like a wise builder that built their house upon the rock. You say, well, let me stop you a minute and say, why would a person choose the sand over the rock? Three reasons. We just got back from California, took our family out there for vacation. We went to the beach, great. Why do people go to the beach versus, we didn't see anybody laying on the rocks, by the way. <laughs> so why would a person choose sand over rocks Number one, it's popular. Number two, it's comfortable. 
Number three, it's conformable. You lay in the sand, you get up, it looks like you. However unflattering that might be. <laughs> it's everybody wants just to custom Jesus. I just want, mm, I just want to kind of <laughs> choose my own beliefs. Just choose in the Bible what I want and throw away what I don't want. I want a conformable Christianity. Well, that's unfortunate. See, the problem with sand is it's unstable. It may be comfortable, it may be conformable, it may be popular, but it's unstable. You can't rely on it in the bad times. And if there were not gonna be any bad times, build wherever you wanna build, who cares? But they're gonna be bad times. The wind will come, the rain will blow on every single human being and God has never promised us a life without adversity. He's just promised us that we will be victorious if we build on his word. And the rains came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it did not fall because it was based on the rock. I say to you that the devil may not devour you, if you live your life based on the Word of God. That's what the Bible teaches. The devil will do anything to keep you from overcoming in life. So as believers, it's critical to know how to stop him. In the Exposing the Enemy series, Jimmy Evans will unveil the devil's nature so you can easily recognize how he works. And today we have an offer that will help you defeat the devil and live victoriously. When you support The Overcoming Life with your online gift of any amount, we'll send you the Exposing Satan session on a video download. You can also receive the complete Exposing the Enemy series on CD or digital download and Jimmy's book, When Life Hurts, for your gift of $55 or more. For your gift of $85 or more, you'll receive the complete Exposing the Enemy series on DVD or digital download along with Jimmy's book, When Life Hurts. God has equipped you with everything you need to be victorious, overcome the enemy, and accomplish his purpose for your life. Let me say something else about the word. It's our sword. It's our foundation. Ephesians 6, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having gird your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all, taking the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and taking the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The only offensive weapon mentioned here is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Everything else is defensive. This is Hebrews 4. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit of joints and marrow and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him who must we give an account. So let me have my sword here. So I've got a bad boy sword here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is a Braveheart sword here. So Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days, didn't eat. Imagine how you would feel 40 days without eating. He was emaciated, skin and bones. And at the end of 40 days, he was attacked by the devil himself. And the devil, de the devil himself came and attacked Jesus with lies and half-truths. And Jesus himself defeated the devil himself after 40 days without eating with no energy in his body, it is written. It is written. It is written. A four-year-old that quotes the Bible is as powerful as any preacher on earth because the power isn't in us, it's in God's word. A man who has no energy in his body after 40 days of fasting can quote the word of God and vanquish the devil because the word doesn't need our help. It has its own power. This is the sword of the spirit. It's living, it's active. You read other books, the Bible reads you. 
And it says no creature can hide from its sight because when the Bible comes in you, it's going to find every demon in hell that's trying to destroy your life and it's going to defeat the devil. This is powerful. This is powerful. And see what the devil, before the devil defeats you, he has to disarm you. He wants this to be in a drawer somewhere. He wants this to be on the dash here of your car or on your coffee table at home or something like that. He just wants you to have a casual relationship with this because once he's taken this away from you, you're easy pickings. And when I talk about a two-edged sword, I'm talking about the way we talk, the way we speak. The devil loves people who are negative, who are doubtful, who are gossipy, who are liars. Their mouth is impure, they're vulgar. He loves that because that's darkness and that's his domain. And he can defeat it very easily. He wants to sit around talking about our problems and how defeated we are and how bad things are and about all these things that are bad going on. Oh, my lumbar goes back, oh, Jesus. (laughs) God wants us to declare the word over every issue in our lives. God wants us to pull the word out and not be, not be you know, holy Joes and legalistic, but for our words of our mouth to line up with the word of God. And when the devil comes and tells us, you need to kill yourself, there's no reason for your life. We need to tell him, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. God has given me a future and a hope. That's what his plan is for me. When he comes to condemn us for our sins, we say there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. He fears this, not my opinion, not my words. He fears this because it's nuclear in the spirit realm. This is the greatest weapon on earth. Nothing can defeat it. Nothing can defeat it. So when you're a believer and your life is being built on the foundation of God's word and you've got the truth in your heart and in your mouth, this is what you... you, Better not come around me, devil. One other thing, let me have my flashlight here. So this is Psalms. And let me read the Psalm real quick. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light into my path. Verse 110, skipping forward. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I have not strayed from your precepts. The word of God is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. This is defensive. This is offensive. This is preemptive. We live in a world with an evil devil and he's laying snares for us. He has a method. He has a plan. As surely as God has a plan for your life, the devil has a plan for your life too. And this exposes him. Your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. The wicked have laid a trap for me, but I'm gonna walk according to your precepts. When you're walking in the word of God, this is what you look like in the spirit realm. You may not be devoured. Your marriage may not be devoured. You may be attacked, but you're gonna stand and you're going to overcome. You may be attacked, but you're going to be victorious. Because the devil cannot defeat this. You're going to defeat him. He's your adversary, but you're going to defeat him. Karen and I were young and we were probably in our mid-20s or so and I was in business with my parents. I wasn't in the ministry yet. And we, uh, the Lord had saved our marriage and our marriage was doing better. But we had moved into a new house and new for us. And we started fighting. And you say, what were you fighting about? I don't know. Karen was just on my nerves. <laughs> I'm sure it was her fault. And we were just maybe a week or so. We'd just been at each other for a week. And um, very seriously, she said, I need to tell you something. I thought, well, she's going to repent. Thank God. You know, <laughs> she went to life group. They're talking about submitting to your husband. She got convicted. This is it. Good. <laughs> Jesus answered my prayers. She said, I need to tell you something. I said, what? And she said, Sarah was praying for us this week. And she saw a lion's head in our living room roaring. And it was trying to break us up. And we're supposed to hold hands and pray and take authority over the devil. I'd never done that before. I thought people who did that were weird. But when she said it, I knew it was right. 
And for the first time as a husband, I took my wife's hand and we prayed and we said, in the name of Jesus, we bind you, Satan. Sarah Key, her word was a light that exposed the trap the enemy was making for us, trying to destroy our marriage. The instant we prayed that prayer, it was like somebody sprayed Lysol on our house and opened the drapes. The entire atmosphere of our house, of our home changed in an instant. And I looked at Karen and I thought, why am I mad at you? And then I started chasing around the house. I, I'm, I'm not stupid, you know. Well, he's an adversary, but I'll tell you one thing. We have a foundation, we have a sword, and we have a lamp. And when we use them, we're victorious. Third question, I'm done. The third question that we ask, how do we protect ourselves and our families against Satan? Total commitment to the word of God. Total commitment. Second Thessalonians 2, let's read this and I'm done. The mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so till he's taken out of the way. Then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the work of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. The word love there is the word agape. Agape means a total commitment regardless of how you feel or the circumstances. They perished because they did not receive the love of the truth. Mark 8, 38, Jesus said, whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, the son of man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his father with his holy angels. We've got to be committed to this. We've got to take this seriously for our homes, our families, every area of our lives, building our lives upon this, letting the, the words of our mouth conform to this making our decisions based on this. And when we do, we will easily overcome our opponent's sake. I hope that the teaching today was a blessing to you. You know, I'm doing this teaching as a part of a series called Exposing the Enemy, but today specifically I'm talking about exposing Satan. You know, so many of God's people are being overwhelmed uh, by the devil. The devil's real. You know, many people today don't believe in the devil. That's wishful thinking. But Jesus talked a lot about him. The Bible talks a lot about him, Old Testament and New Testament. He shows up in Genesis chapter three and doesn't go away until uh, Revelation chapter 20. And so it's, he's all through the Bible, but he's defeated. And this is what I want you to hear today. He's a defeated foe. Satan opposes the word of God. And I said in the program today that some people are saved, but they're not safe because they're not standing on the Word of God. They're not fighting with the Word of God. They're, they don't understand the power of the Bible against Satan. And Jesus said that he's given us authority over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing would by any means harm us. And I'm saying if we use the authority, if we stand on the Word of God and use the weapons that God has given us, we can defeat Satan every single time. And that's really good news. Now the uh, teaching that I did today, exposing Satan. Uh, if you would support us here at The Overcoming Life, we, we really need your support to continue to do what we do, helping people, coming back to you, and helping, helping people to overcome, helping people to understand you don't have to live defeated, but you can live an overcoming life. If you'll help us financially with your gift of any amount right now, I wanna give you the Exposing Satan video download. Okay, this is the entire teaching you saw a portion of today. Your gift of any amount will give you the video download of today's message. For your gift of $55 or more, we'll give you the entire CD set of Exposing the Enemy or the audio download. You can get the physical version or the audio download either way, plus my book, When Life Hurts. And I talk about in When Life Hurts, how to deal with what the, devil, the damage the devil's done from our past. You know, we all go through issues in our lives and sometimes we just don't know how to deal with it, you know, and we don't. But the devil takes advantage of those things to hold us in bondage and to keep that pain locked in our lives. So I have a book called When Life Hurts, and so we wanna get you 
the CD set or the audio download with that book for your gift of $85 or more. I want to give you the Exposing the Enemy DVD set, the physical set, or the video download. You can get the video download right now and begin to watch the entire thing, plus When Life Hurts, the book. So we want to get these resources into your hands, but I want to say to you, thank you for joining me today on The Overcoming Life. I'm here to help you overcome. I'm here to let you know that you're a winner, that God made you to win, that God wants you to live a life of fullness and victory. And God has a future and a hope for you. And maybe right now you're a little bit discouraged or maybe you're a little bit down or maybe you feel like Satan is attacking you. I hope that this program has encouraged you today to stand up, to fight, and to be the victor that God has made you to be. Thank you for joining me today on The Overcoming Life. I'll see you next time. This is the sword of the Spirit. It's living, it's active. You read other books, the Bible reads you, and it says no creature can hide from its sight because when the Bible comes in you, it's gonna find every demon in hell that's trying to destroy your life, and it's gonna defeat the devil. In the Exposing the Enemy series, Jimmy Evans will unveil the devil's nature so you can easily recognize how he works. Support the overcoming life with your online gift of any amount, and we'll send you the Exposing Satan session as a video download. He's stealthy, he's slithery, he's a liar, but we have authority over him and we need to use it. Receive the complete Exposing the Enemy series on CD or digital download in Jimmy Evans' book, When Life Hurts, for your gift of $55 or more. For your gift of $85 or more, you'll receive the complete Exposing the Enemy series on DVD or digital download. God has equipped you with everything you need to be victorious and accomplish His purpose for your life. Thank you for watching The Overcoming Life with Jimmy Evans.